know what is uh, what is going to come. Uh, I'm going to say two two days ago you made a very impressive state of the institute uh, talk, which was extremely wide ranging uh, and exciting. But you call among those things that you call for was focus. But I saw a longer shopping list than ever. I, 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 is anybody trying to be a jack of all trades and a master of none? <laughs> Thank you, Brian, for that very appropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the challenge of this group. It's a collective effort to identify where we're going to focus. Now, you yourself didn't help us a lot yesterday. <laughs> 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 challenging issue, the, the question which board has asked us in the last meeting, where, what are we dropping? And I think we have dropped some things on the margin, but we really need to go much more in depth in terms of picking our battles. I think that is very clearly also what the Science Council is trying to do with the MTP, making us make much more explicit where we're going. So I think you're, it's a fair comment. Well, I mean, one, one of the things specifically that uh, um, that you, you said, the evolution of research, you spoke of uh, upstream uh, importance and downstream of the integration and innovation with reduced emphasis in the middle areas of traditional research. What exactly do you mean? I, mean, which, what, I thought some of those traditional areas of research were our, are our strength. I mean, specifically, what are you talking about? What will go? Yeah. Well, what we clearly have done, I think, over the last few years is, for example, gone out of a lot of feeding trials a lot of testing of hundreds of accessions of germplasm, for example. A number of those areas which I think our national partners are very capable of doing, and doing in a more decentralized and much more cost-effective way. I mean, if you think of our own work here, particularly in diversity, for example, on feeding, I think we've now focused it much more strategically in terms of adapting to changing fluctuating feeding systems, focusing on feed crops, dropping things like rumen microbes, a number of those areas. So I think we are trying to focus to come back to your first question. So I, I, I would say sort of the feeding and weighing type of experiment, this okay. clearly I think we don't need to do it. I think we recognize that in a very complex ecosystem setting as the Inter-Academy Council has shown for Africa, these things have to be done locally. And in a sense we provide building blocks but it is very much our partners who are establishing, building those in actual systems. In you, the, the things you've spoken of are things that we've already discarded. <laughs> are there some other things that we're doing now that are valuable? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, that's a good question. Uh, why not? I think, yes, yes indeed. I think we hope that the themes will actually be doing that challenging of your own assumptions, and I think management is helping you by raising some questions around a number of those areas. But I think, for example, a very valid question is, should we continue characterizing every animal on the globe, for example, or do we train, as we're doing now with the work with Han is doing in China, establishing a capacity in China to do the molecular characterization of their animals. So that's, for example, a trend which certainly I would see that we're developing the approaches training other people and getting them to do it, rather than us sort of monopolizing the world's characterization of molecular diagnosis of animals. Okay. Um, moving on, uh, theme two is very much your flagship, uh, I think, is, is that uh, making things happen at the front line is what you said when you first came in as Director General. And you talked of a paradigm shift of knowledge management, not knowledge generation. I don't know whether the word not was there. Uh, uh, we seem to have difficulty finding a leader for that uh, particular theme, uh, or, or maintaining a leader. I mean, do you think that this is realistic? Should we re really be uh, having this as a theme, or should we be having this integrated into, into all the other activities of the research? Well, I think this is part of actually being ahead of the pack. I think this is the present thinking of how you link research to actual development. It's obviously an area where you don't find a lot of practitioners. So we're, so, we're too far ahead of that. Well, I hope not. Uh, I think what we're saying is we need to expand uh, the way we cast our net to bring in appropriate leadership, which may not be right now 
be driven by people in the agricultural sector. So we really are trying to look for that intellectual leadership and bring that together with our own livestock expertise to ground it on livestock innovations. What is the danger of this becoming too close to development? I mean, Alain uh, warned that we shouldn't be drawn into uh, the development arena. We are a research institute. Do you feel uh, that there's a danger in that area that we're going to be drawn too far into, into the development? Well, I think this is obviously a very tricky balance to maintain, but I think we were coming from a corner where I think Hillary was seen as doing great science but not having impact on the ground. And I think what we're trying to do is to make sure that that knowledge, I think we've produced a lot of knowledge assets, but we're not being able to really get them out there to be used. And I think that's exactly the challenge. Think about our thinking on genetic resources. It's actually not leading, as Olivier described yesterday, into actual breeding programs, for example. So making those links is what an innovation system is about. I don't know whether this is part of it, but you did make a statement in your, in your address that soft skills are important, and I didn't quite understand it. What are they? I mean, have you got any, and, uh, and how can you talk None. <laughs> well, I think the fact that we realize that we're moving from, if you want, a more self-standing research production entity to a much more network distributed way of working implies that having facilitation skills to develop complex projects, for example, coming up front with a clear understanding of what the partners want, how you structure it, managing those complex relationships where people don't have line responsibility to you, those sort of set of skills are going to be more and more important in the type of research we're trying to do. Fundraising is absolutely critical and, and a lot of pressure on the operating project uh, leaders in this. What are you personally doing in regarding fundraising for every? Okay, well. Uh, <laughs> I'm spending about half my work time traveling, basically visiting a lot of our donors. Our core effort is to maintain the unrestricted contributions to the center, which are basically the glue which allows things like this to happen, which no project would pay for. And at the same time, that's always a scouting mission in terms of identifying new trends, new demands out there, and bringing those messages back. As you know, a particular effort of mine has been how we engage, particularly Nordic countries, with our CGR agenda. We have not been very good at attracting staff from those countries, and so their contribution has been financial contributions, but they want to make more substantive contributions. So we have been now developing schemes of shared appointments, and I think we've got Hannah here as the first case we're doing with Sweden. Jan knows about this. We're establishing bioinformatics position which will be sharing time with us, etc. So that's been one of the, I've, I've insisted that really resource mobilization is not just dollars, but it's people, it's political support, and you really have to drive all those things. And that's a number of things where people want to see the DG, that's why I'm on the road. Okay, good, good. Um, you're very much embroiled in the CGIR integration uh, in, in Africa. And, and while I think it's clearly a good idea from our national regional partners point of view, uh, are joint MTPs remotely feasible? I mean, can, can, can we really achieve something there? I think that depends on how you define the joint MTP. I think we are realistically saying it's not an expectation that every petty little activity will have to be consulted with everybody else, but that large lines of work, major programs are really discussed, negotiated across centers and with national partners. But clearly more communication a, rather than uh, uh, rather than having these, uh, well, these wonderful new uh, joint activities, uh, MTBs and activities. Well, but what we have been discussing is obviously if Burundi wants germplasm or potatoes, they'll just go straight to sick. But if they're talking about natural resource management in a certain region, probably a number of centers are involved. Or if they're talking about information sharing for policy makers or whatever, those things don't have clear institutional allocations and make sense to be much more broadly integrated. So actually what we're proposing is to identify clearly what are the key areas where there's a huge gain to be achieved from synergies and start from those and don't expect to rationalize every little program. I think one of the things that worries several people is that we're the only livestock center in the, in the CG. And as we get drawn more into this regional MTPs and all this, this sort of thing, are we going to get lost? Are we going to lose our, 
uh, a primary function of livestock research? I think that's a very valid point, and I think the board is very conscious of that. If you read the statement the board produced at the last board meeting, we're clearly emphasizing that in the whole restructuring, we feel that the CGR needs to maintain a global presence as a livestock entity. So clearly we're saying we can work in the regional context, very usefully, and certainly from our roots, we're very much linked to the Africa region, but we still need to maintain that global emphasis. Um, if I may dare uh, say so, Carlos, you have a, a reputation of being Mr. Politically Correct. Uh, as a director of a research institute, is that an attribute or a weakness? Probably <laughs> both. Uh, <laughs> depends on what setting you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, you, you pay attention to making sure that, uh, that, that, that things are done correctly, that we're, um, we're giving, I mean, not a doubt about the time, but um, do, do you feel that uh, if you've got to be hard-nosed uh, on research, uh, sometimes uh, the political correctness might interfere with, with, uh, with those sort of decisions? I think the political correctness relates much more to how you do things than what you do. And I think we have made the decisions on what we do on a very technical basis but found ways to do it, I think, which are acceptable to the partners. I think that's the art that you want okay. to run in. The last question then is, you know, what, what will your legacy be, Carlos? I mean, what do you want to be remembered for doing? Well, we've made some impact with our research. <laughs> and, and, and have we at the moment? Well, I think we have a huge stock of knowledge out there. We've started a number of things which are out there. We haven't made sure, as we said before, that actually that turns into changes in people's livelihoods. Now. That's where we are trying to put the effort to build that up front into our research, I think. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.